Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to um, draw or paint rather, well both, paint and draw um, a mason jar full of hydrangeas. I was um, looking for some inspiration today so I looked through my um, request list that I've been going, I've been keeping for months whenever somebody asks me if I will paint them something or do a tutorial on this or that. I just have a list going in my uh, planner. So I saw that somebody had asked for hydrangeas, so I thought, well, I will do hydrangeas today. Um, so I've just basically sketched out a little mason jar here. All right, just looks like kind of like a uh, rectangle, just a three-sided rectangle with curvy edges. And now I'm just gonna throw in um, a couple like almost pom-pom shapes okay because when you're painting a, a hydrangea or a lilac anything like that you're you've got a very multi blossomed or multi petaled flower so you want to treat that kind of like the clump you want to treat the clump of flowers as one um, uh, I'll do this a little bit darker than I normally would so you can see it it's a watercolor pencil so I will be able to dissolve it I'm just using regular watercolor pencils, not the ink tents. So I think you can see that. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see my lines there. I know it's kind of bright. Um, but as soon as I get in painting, I think that we won't have any trouble. So what I'm going to use for colors, because hydrangeas can be different colors, I think I'm going to use, um, use some mauve. Oh, there goes the furnace. <laughs> it's such a beautiful sunny day um, out today, but it's still cold. It's still February. <laughs> Hopefully that's not a, that's not a problem for you. And I'm going to do, I think, a little bit of uh, cerulean blue. It's a color I don't use very often. You can use cobalt or ultramarine if you don't have cerulean. Just add a little more water to it. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to get a little bit of um, emerald green for the, um, for the jar, Put that over there. I'm using my travel palette of Cotman paints because um, I figured I could actually get my palette in view for you and that would be a little bit easier for you. And um, I'm going to start by wetting the um, jar. And you know, you could do this whole painting with watercolor pencils if you prefer. You could sketch everything out and then um, liquefy it with the water and then if you needed to add more paint, just touch the tip of your um, brush to the lead and do it that way. Now emerald green, see how bright that and transparent that is? That would be a more staining color than like your sap green or your um, chrome green. So if you want to blend, you want to make sure that you have plenty of water right now. And I just want to get kind of a basic color in there, a little, little blue in there for the water. I like to reflect other colors that I'm going to be using in the sketch here. This is going to be a quick painting. It's going to be under 20 minutes, so I'm not going to worry about um, details or anything. I just want to get those colors in. And I did really like that blue that I had uh, sketched with, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in there too. This is um, a Derwent watercolor. It's called Kingfisher Blue. That's a color that I'm using here. All right. I can go and add a little bit more detail later but I just wanted to get some, some sort of color in there for the time being. All right, so now we're gonna go to the flowers. That's looking a lot lighter on my monitor than it is on my paper. My paper's much darker, so when I play this back, hopefully, hopefully it'll look good. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just grab some of this blue with my round brush, and I'm just gonna start dabbing in some shapes over here, okay? The interesting thing about hydrangeas is that they can change color and um, people think it's due to the acidity of the soil and well it's somewhat due to the acidity of the soil but it has more to do with the aluminum in the soil and um, you have to have a certain pH for the aluminum to be able to be kind of pulled up and extracted and um, it can like vary quite a bit from area to area. You could have blue hydrangeas in one spot and then like 10 feet away have pink hydrangeas. It's kind of strange. They could either, the pink ones can go blue and the blue ones can go pink, but the white ones will always be white. So it's very, uh, very interesting. I'm gonna do um, some pink ones up here. I'm gonna be careful here and here and here because they're touching wet spots in my picture. And I'm just gonna put in some blobs basically. Because when you're looking at something like hydrangeas or lilac, something like that, your brain cannot see every single petal at the same time. We'll paint some with detail at the end, but to begin, we want to uh, we want to just get in the basic shapes. Because your eyeballs can't focus on every bit of that picture at once. 
I'm painting on Fabriano soft press paper um, because I don't anticipate I'll have to lift too much off here so you can use whatever kind you like um, this is just a, what I would consider a practice sketch so um, so use whatever you like sometimes I get asked can I can I paint on cardstock well you know I have like you know stamped images and watercolored them on cardstock it's just not going to take the amount of abuse or the amount of water that watercolor paper can take so I don't think it would be that great for practicing techniques but if you're using it for a card or something I think you'd be fine I think I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that it's interesting color mixing there I don't think I've ever painted a hydrangea before this will be this is a first First for both of us, probably. All right, let's see. I think I want to get some more, um, I think I want to have a warmer pink, so what I'm gonna do is undercoat with a little bit of yellow over here. Spread that around a bit. And then go in with my, um, my mauve. Cause I don't want it to go orange, I'm just gonna put some colors in there. My jar seems to be pretty dry. The soft press paper uh, doesn't seem to blend as well, so um, I can kind of go right. If it's something like this, or I want to paint quickly, it's actually a positive because I can go right next to it and not worry about it. I'm gonna let those colors blend, and then I'm going to go in and add more details later. I really hope that furnace isn't too loud in the background. I know sometimes when I'm painting I get kind of mellow and I don't speak up very loud. And let's see, I think I'll do another blue over here and I want to add some shadow to that so I think I'll do some ultramarine blue because it's a little bit darker and add a little bit, I think I'll add, actually, I think I'll put some of that um, mauve in there. And I think I'll put a little bit of that green in there, and I think that's going to make me a nice gray. Mix all those colors. Yeah, it's a nice gray, blue, kind of an indigo color. So I didn't use my burnt sienna in blue combination I use a lot because I don't have burnt sienna in this picture, so I'm using colors I already have. And I'll be using that and other shadows on these blue flowers. And I think I'll do a very similar color over here. Start off with my blue. Then mix in some of that gray color. I don't know, it's fun to, because when you have a palette with like lots of colors, sometimes it's fun to try um, the colors you don't necessarily use. I generally use the same six colors all the time. But it's fun. It's, it kind of gives you a kind of out-of-the-box way of looking at stuff when you go with different colors. All right, while that's drying, I'm going to focus on the jar a little bit. And I'm going to use some of this uh, this gray that I mixed up. Um, I wonder, is this helpful being able to see my palette? Because I can totally use a smaller smaller set for my little quick tutorials. I don't know if that's easier for you to see what I'm mixing up. I'm going to add this shadow here at the bottom. Now typically I would turn this around to have this closer to me so I could have a little more control on this, but um, I want you to be able to see it kind of from your perspective, how you'd be looking at it. And I want to put a water line in here, um, I would say right about there. Now my ellipses may be completely weird and off and <laughs> strange and I apologize if they are because I'm not looking at them straight. So. <laughs> So it's, uh, I could be completely crooked with these and I have no way of telling until I turn it around. <laughs> Seems to look all right from here, but we won't know until we're, until I'm done and I flip it around. It's a little strong, I want to soften that up a little bit with some water. And I think I'm not liking this so much here. I think I want to actually maybe just wet this whole thing out. I have two, this is too wide over here, so I need to blend that out before it stains. I need to, I could tell that's a mistake already. I could tell it doesn't look great, so I'm just going to go in and obscure it to get rid of it. 
jars are one of those things that a lot of times the more you do do it, the worse they get because you, you get off a little bit and then you try to compensate and then you're way off. All right, I'm just gonna throw in some juicy watercolor here because because I am. All right, I wanna put the stem in for that and I, uh, I think I'm gonna grab a little sap green for that. And just gonna throw it in, throw a couple in. And I don't care if it blends out because I do want it to be a little bit distorted from the, from the water. And I might actually end up putting some brown in there after all. I don't know, we'll see. I think I can actually make my own brown. I think I'll take some of that yellow I had used, which was um, a cadmium yellow medium and add some of that mauve to it. And I think I can get myself a decent brown that way. Maybe a little green added to it. See that? You just kind of, you kind of make your own mud. And sometimes it's a good thing, like when you want to make a brown. I haven't used any red, but the mauve is kind of, um, replacing a red here, so I'm going to add some of that in there. Yeah, it looks pretty brown there now that I add it in. And I think I'm going to put some of that in amongst here, because you'll be able to see some stems and stuff. And I want to put a few a few leaves, and I'm going to go and use that sap green again. And I think I'm going to put, I think they're kind of like heart-shaped leaves, kind of with a point getting wider at the top. I think that's what they have, so I'm going to throw a couple of those in there. Remember, this is just a sketch. It's an exercise. Get you ready for a day of painting, or in my case, a little, uh, a little uh, time to create a little bit before my kids got home. My house was just a wreck, and I had to, uh, I had to tend to that before I could come downstairs and play. And I only have, oh, like an hour before the kids get home from school. So it's like I, I need to, I need to paint something. What, what am I going to paint? Don't you hate it when you have time and you can't think of what you want to paint? or what you want to create that's so frustrating. <laughs> a good thing I have the request list. That's all I can say. All right, for shadow on that, I'm gonna use some ultramarine blue and some more of that sap green to give me kind of like an evergreen color. I'm just gonna add it up near the flowers so it can kind of uh, be kind of like a shadow because it's tucked in. The flowers are blocking some of the light to it. Um, and I can get my brush, any brush has a beveled edge like this or cut a piece of credit card or whatever and I can scrape in my veins into the wet paint. You can even go over a little bit if you don't feel like it's dark enough. I get a little bit darker of a line if I use the uh, cut up piece of credit card. I do notice that. And I also notice that my Cotman paints are a little bit lighter than the um, M. Graham I generally paint with if I'm using my big palette. Because the M. Graham are artist quality and they've got a little bit more pigmentation, but these are fine. These aren't bad paints at all. One more shadow over here. So with this paper, you really need to kind of get in there while it's wet if you want them to blend. And you have to kind of work a little bit quicker, but that's kind of what I need here for a tutorial. All right. Oh, I want to put a little bit of a shadow on the table. Um, not even so much of a shadow as it is a reflection. So what I'm going to do is just add some and add some water down here. It's going to have soft lighting, nothing too uh, strong. So I'm just kind of adding water all under the uh, under the base. Pull it up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. And then I'm just going to kind of add any any of these colors. I've used already. It's a very soft look here. I'm showing you a lot of little cheats is what I'm doing because <laughs> these little cheats are how you paint quickly. You're kind of like a magician. You fool the eye a bit. You know, you, you just kind of put in these blurry little um, blurry little lines and your brain puts, puts the rest of the picture together. Just a little crafty cheat. So I made gray. I took that brown that I made with a little ultramarine blue and I'm going to add that really, really close touching and that's going to give me that just a little hard shadow and then it's going to fade away to nothing. And I can go in and add some of that to my, my base as well because I try to repeat my shadows here and there. 
so I don't end up with anything that looks really out of place or discordant. I decided that while I'm doing my painting tutorials, I'm going to just kind of throw in little smattering bits of um, kind of artsiness, uh, you know, explain why we do certain things and instead of it being so hit or miss, because when you've been painting forever, you don't even think about, you know, composition as much as, you know, when you're starting out, you're trying to figure out why some pictures look really good and some just look awful. Um, so I'm going to try to add some of that, that info in as I'm working. All right. So you just sort of remember to wet your any areas that are looking a little harsh and you just wet them out. Okay, so to do the flowers, um, hydrangea flowers generally have um, four petals per, each little flower on a hydrangea has about four petals. I think I'll zoom in just a bit since you've seen me do all my mixing. I don't think you need to see that anymore necessarily. Um, so I think this one will be the easiest one to show you on. And I'm just gonna kind of draw few of these individual little petals. Okay, then I'll just wet my brush and just kind of pull in the color. Okay, you don't want to go too uh, defined. Just do a couple full flowers and then you just throw in a few petals after that. I'm using just mauve and I'm letting the colors underneath kind of show through. Okay, you gotta let the, um, na uh, let the, let your underpainting do the work, okay? And now I'm just throwing in kind of wiggly lines because your brain sees the two petals in front and will fill in the rest of the blanks. It'll say, oh yeah, that does hydrangea. Look at all those petals she painted in there. Well, no, I painted like two flowers and the rest are just squiggly lines, but nobody needs to know that, except for, you know, you guys. <laughs> right, right, it's our little secret. Nobody needs to know the, how easy this is. I don't mind telling people how easy it is. And then, um, maybe I can put one more full flower in there, and I'm still using that same number six round brush. This is actually a cotton brush. Um, I just have to make sure I'm very careful not to leave any of these wooden handled brushes in my water. I typically use the plastic handled ones because um, if they get left in the water overnight, the wood isn't going to swell and the bristles come loose or anything like they can with the wooden handled ones. So, uh, but these are nice. They come to a nice point. They're very affordable too, which is nice. As are the Aqualons that I also use. Um, I am not a brush snob. I like synthetic brushes because they're... Um, they don't support the fur trade and um, quite frankly they work very well all right and then if I want to put some little centers on there I'm trying to rack my brain here I think that the centers on the on those might be yellow so I'm just gonna hope that's the case and dab in a few just little yellow spots here and there because we're just you know we paint one thing in detail and the rest we just kind of trick everybody okay let's do a blue one before we run out of time it's uh yeah 18 minutes here so I've got about a minute and a half I'm um, going to do a little bit of ultramarine blue and uh, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. Again, we're going to paint one or two flowers and do another one over here. You know, nothing fancy. Wipe off our brush and drag the color in. And so you're going to do this for every flower. If you have to go and add some more color, go ahead. I didn't put very much on there. Anything I need a little more. All right. So what I'm going to do, actually, I think I'll pause the camera so I have a little time left, and then I will um, do the same thing for the, uh, you know, the rest of these, and then come back and show you the finished one. So just hang on. I'll be right back in a couple seconds. Okay, I'm sorry about that pause. We're rolling. <laughs> I wasn't sure. Um, so what I've done here, I just took a little bit of that dark that I had mixed, and I'm kind of going in and adding a few shadows. Um, I did the same kind of scribbly technique with the background like I showed you before, kind of like that, you know, just to kind of give the further away from you 
the flower is, the more um, random and squiggly you want it to be. 